today, instead of it being an arithmetic sequence, it is a geometric sequence, which means uh, we need to use the recursive and the explicit formula to find a number in the sequence. And just like last time, the recursive rule will find the next number. It will use the previous number to find the next number. And then in the explicit formula, we can look somewhere way down the road to find a number in the future. Um, for this to kind of make sense, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a penny on the first day and double it every single day for a month? Or would you rather me give you a thousand dollars a day in that month? To the actual notes of this. Uh, for each of the following geometric sequences, we want to identify the ratio, not the common difference, but the R value. And then we want to find the next two terms. So can you tell me um, the ratio, what we're multiplying to go from 2 to 6 to 18, just by sight? Really? Times 3, right? So we're multiplying times 3. So we want to find the next two terms after that. 18 times 3. Uh, no, nobody from the audience. 18 times 3. Uh, it's going to be 54 times 3 again, 162. So 54, 162. Uh, what about for the next one? 4 to negative 20 to 100. Yeah, these can kind of bounce back and forth. Yeah, good. Now, how can you do this and never fail? Well, if I take negative 20 and divide it by the number before that, that's going to give me the answer of negative 5. Come back here. Take 18. Undo the multiplication with its opposite, division. Divide by the number before it. What is 18 divided by 6? Three. So you can find out what this is by simply dividing two numbers to find the common ratio. All right, we're multiplying by negative 5. So now we're going to have a negative 500. Multiplying by 5 again, look how big this gets. This is going to be 2,500 or 2,500. Okay. Now, our values can decrease. Now, we just multiplied by a negative. Did that cause the number to decrease? I mean, yes, it became negative, and that's thinking of decreasing. But in terms of the, the look of the number, did it cause it to get smaller? No. So how can we multiply and make a smaller number? We've talked about this during the year. That number's got to be between 0 and 1, right? Multiplying by 1 keeps it the same. Anything bigger than that causes it to increase. So what's the ratio here? 16 to 18, sorry, to 8 to 4. Not minus 2, no. Dividing by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half, right? Watch. Take 4, divide it by a number before it. So what's right before the 4? 8. What is 4 out of 8? A half. All right, 1 half. So we're multiplying by a half. Half of 4, half of 2. There you go. So that's how you find what you're multiplying by. To consider the geometric sequence by the recursive rule, we want to write the next three terms. So based on what this is, um, who, could, who can decipher the code? B1 equal 3. What's that trying to tell you? First number is 3. Good. So first number, 3. And we want to find the next three terms. So the second, the third number, and the fourth number. Okay, so these are the places that it's in, and we want to come up with the other ones. Now, decipher this code. What is it simply telling you? You're multiplying by 2. That's all you're doing. You're multiplying by 2 to find the next number. So to find the second number, I multiply the first number, which is 3 times 2, voila, 6. Who could tell me what the third number is? Sam, tell me how you got there. You multiply the number in the second place times 2. How about the fourth number? William, how'd you get there? Okay, good. Now, how do we tell a computer to do this? How do we tell something that can't think on its own to do this? Let's do a couple here. I want to find the second number. 
We already know what it is. If you're not taking the Regents, I'm totally fine with you doing this. But if you're taking it um, a week from Thursday, you got to be able to plug this in as little 2 minus 1. Remember, this is subscript, submarine script. It's down low, and it's times 2. I do 2 minus 1, B1. Now, they always have to tell you the first number. What's the number in the first spot? 3. And what is 3 times 2? It is 6. Okay? So... We could keep doing this to get the next number. I'm not going to keep doing that today. Um, but that's how you would be able to find and show work to find those numbers. But what if we were trying to come up with the eighth term? Would this be the best, fastest way to do this? No, this would take quite some time. So we go to the explicit rule, which, oops, oops, uh, which can be found at the top of your notes, just right here. Again, just plug in values um, for the variables and we'll be all set. Uh, we keep the B, but we change the N, the number, to 8. Because we're trying to find the 8th term. Now it uses the first term. The first term was always said to us as 3. We set this up as parentheses. And you should look, the, the look at this should look familiar. It looks like an exponential function. Where arithmetic is more of like a linear function, this is an exponential function, which we're having a starting value, we know what we're multiplying by, and we need to remember how many times to do it. So if we're finding the eighth term, how many times do you multiply by two? Not eight times, seven, because you're starting on the first step, and you're trying to get there um, by doing just one less than what you have. So eight minus one would be the would be the exponent. So let's do that quick subtraction first. So that's going to be to the seventh power. How do you do these? No other way than a cell phone and a calculator. If you have just a cell phone, do this part first. Do two to the seventh, then multiply by three. Don't try to do three times two to the seventh. I don't think your calculator can handle it. So again, if you're using a cell phone, do three up to the seventh power, press enter, and then you got to double that times, oh, did I screw that up? Oh, times two, sorry. Uh, I hate when I do that. Um, apologies. Clear, clear. Uh, two to the seventh power um, is what we got to do. And then we multiply that by three, the starting value. Okay? So you end up at 384. Had a graphing calculator. You could have just done three, parenthesis, two, parenthesis, up to the seventh power. Could put it in all at once. Graphing calculators can handle the heavy lifting and get 384. Same answer. Okay. So in the eighth spot is 384, and we found that much faster than trying to find every single number. Okay. Enough. If the first two terms of a geometric sequence are 4 and 12, which would be the tenth term? So we've got the first, we've got the second, and I mean, you can keep going all the way to 10 if you wanted to. It's going to take you a little bit. There is a faster way, which I will show you. Um, let's see if we can come up with what's going on here. We need to know what the R value is. So how are these being multiplied? They give you the first and the second. Can you tell what's being used for multiplying? Three, good, right? Because if you take 12 divide it by the number before it, it will give you 3. Now, do we want to use recursive or geometric if we're trying to find the 10th term? Recursive every time. Recursive uses every number. I I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm sorry, Natalie. Recursive or explicit. Yes. Explicit, because explicit is going to zoom us to the future and give us that number right away. So we just talked about it. Let's, t uh, let's write it down. B10 equaling first or initial value, 4, the multiplying rate times 3, and how many times do you multiply by 3 in time to find the 10th term? 9 times. And if you want to skip that step where you just write the 9, that is totally acceptable, and now we're ready to go. Uh, this part in your calculator first, if you're using a cell phone, if you're not using a cell phone, everything at once. So 4 is the start. We're multiplying by 3, and we're going to do that 9 times. 
voila, big number, because we know that these grow much faster than the others. William, with me? Yeah, got all that down already? So, 78,732. Okay. And as soon as that's down, we'll move on to the back. Uh, so we get the first three terms in a geometric sequence. We want to write a recursive rule, an explicit rule, so we can kind of tell the difference between the two of them. And we want to try to see if we can find a couple other things out. So recursive rule for this. Well, maybe important to label. One, two, three. With the recursive rule, you always have to say what the first number is because it uses that first number to get things going. First number, William, what is it? First, and now, to find some number, it always starts with an. All we got to do is go backwards one. So an minus one sends us back. We're multiplying. We need that r value. Well, this one's a little trickier. So 216, 144, 96 doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So what's the little rule that Petri has tried to get to you, even though when it was simple? How do you figure out the multiplying rate? Really? Sure, 144 divided by 216. Put the second number in the top, divided by the one before it. Clearly, this is going to give us a decimal or a fraction. So 144 divided by 216 gives us 6 repeating. Anybody know this fraction? It's a famous one. If you're not sure, math button changes it to a fraction, and it is two-thirds, okay? The grandparent to one-third, two-thirds, is a famous repeating decimal, two-thirds. So times two-thirds. Next up, we've got to write the explicit rule for this. So a little different, but again, it's still just trying to find a number. Still uses the starting value of... 216 in parentheses what are we multiplying by two-thirds and we always do that one less than the number we're trying to find so instead of the next three I, I read that wrong we just want to find the next one so the fourth one here so fourth one here we want to find the next term let's use the recursive rule to find the fourth number we've got to go 4 minus 1. We're going to go back 1, multiply that number by 2 thirds. We're looking at the third number. What was the number in the third spot? 96. So we do 96 times 2 thirds, and guess what? That is, in fact, 64. Now, in order to find the eighth term, Using this way, we'd have to find the 5th, the 6th, the 7th. Nobody wants to take the time to do that. So let's use our express shipping, Amazon Prime it. We're going to find the 8th term by using 216 times 2 to the 3rd. How many times? I think everyone can uh, do 8 minus 1 for 7. And at this point, just go to the calculator. You're going to have to put this in parentheses on your cell phone. Uh, to make sure that this happens correctly. So 216 parenthesis, I can just do 2 divided by 3, and then I want to do this to the 7th power. Okay? Voila! Gives us a decimal. That's okay. Uh, not all these are going to be whole numbers. So 8th number is 12.642. Uh, um, I threw in one of these. It's not geometric. It's arithmetic. Wasn't sure if I was going to use it. Uh, not going to use it. So we're not going to do exercise number five. Similar to what we did last class, they're adding three more hexagons every single time. So adding, not multiplying. So not a great example. Uh, but let's do this one because it's important because we graph these. And so when we graph, it's important that we don't connect the points. So, all right. So there you go. We found the second number using the recursive rule. And then we decided just to go, you know what, 16 eight 
half of that is four, half of that is two, half of that is one, 